Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our Lunch and Learn today. I'm Tony Ross, the Director of Communications at Provalis Research. Before I introduce our presenter, if there are people in the audience today who would like to present their work through our Lunch and Learn series and have an instructive way to use our software, please contact us through the Contact Us section of our website. We are in the process of scheduling our spring series of Lunch and Learns, and we would like to hear from you. The title of today's presentation is Exploring Patients' Behavior Through the Collection and Analysis of the Messages They Exchange on Healthcare Forums. Our presenter today is Thierry Rogel. A mining engineer, Thierry has quickly shifted from coal to data and learned to extract value from massive information way before big data even existed as a buzzword. When he was head of the information systems of the AMF, the French counterpart to the Security and Exchange Commission, he introduced AI-based algorithms to spot insider trading within stock transaction records. Now serving the pharma industry for more than 25 years, he focuses on harnessing the many faces of healthcare information to help improve patient support. Whenever he has the opportunity to escape from his job, you will often find him making music with friends or playing with his dogs. At the end of the presentation, if you wish to ask questions, please send them to us through the chat feature at the upper right hand of your screen. We will take as many as possible. And now I will turn the presentation over to Thierry. Good morning, everyone. My name is Thierry Baroguel, and I am the CEO of a French company named Focus Patient. Uh, as you can see from the various hashtags uh, on the slide, Focus Patient is dedicated to put patients at the center of the strategies of various healthcare stakeholders and uses various technologies uh, to do so. Now you might ask the question, why do focus, does Focus Patient exist? Why do you need to uh, listen to the patient and why is the patient not listened to uh, by those stakeholders? Well, this is a, a European pharmaceutical industry paradox. At least in Europe, uh, the pharma industry uh, has a lot of information coming from physicians, from pharmacists, from hospitals. They know everything inside out from the prescription, distribution, and uh, al also the sales pathway. But there is an important stakeholder that they do not speak to and that they do not listen to usually. It's the patient. Uh, the situation is that as ma many of the drugs and treatments are paid for by the national uh, social security and by payers, uh, any discussion about a drug towards a patient is considered a, as a direct promotion and is completely forbidden. So there's no chance that in France, for instance, you would find any uh, billboard about a drug or a coupon to be redeemed when you go to your physician. That's completely out of the question. So the pharma industry uh, is lacking this information at a moment where it, it is very important for them to understand what the behavior of the patient. I mean, patient takes decision every day about their treatment and those decisions are taken through drivers that the pharmaceutical industry doesn't know. I mean, if the patient understands the risks of the disease, if they understand the evolution of its disease, if they have an opinion about drug A versus drug B, if they have trust or doubt about a physician, uh, if their burden of their disease is too high within their family or, uh, or with their friends, this will create emotions, positive like trust and satisfaction or negative like fear and doubt. And then this will in turn uh, become behavior of the patient. He will accept or refuse a treatment. He will be compliant or will be non-observant. He will blame the, do the doctor. He will blame the drug and ask for a switch. Uh, and maybe they will give up completely the treatment. So. Any, all, all of these are decisions that are actually taken by the patients, although the pharmaceutical industry has taken all precautions to make sure physicians will prescribe the right thing. It can be all ruined because they don't know how the patient will react and how he will, be, he will behave. So our mission uh, in Focus Patient is to 
be the one who bring the understanding of the patient's behavior and the, the understanding of the drivers behind this behavior. And in order to do so, we have decided to use a, a source that is very interesting in terms of information coming directly from patients. And these are the messages that they exchange on blogs, forums, and other available social media about their pathology, about their healthcare, about their situation. And so in a nutshell, like you can see in this slide, we harvest uh, any messages ex exchange about healthcare uh, in the internet, and we sort of crunch it using artificial intelligence and LLP to turn something that is completely unstructured, like the, mess the, the, the mass of messages, into uh, uh, performance and uh, indicators and uh, uh, rational analysis of their behaviors and the driver behind their behaviors. So that, that is our mission in life, if you want. And this is based on that, that we sell services to the pharmaceutical industry. In order to do so, we have decided from the start to build a database of our own, which we called Observatoire Social du Patient, which is a repository to hold not only those messages that we have collected on, on the forums, but also the, the result of the analysis automated analysis of those messages in terms of uh, semantic and what they contain, what are they about. Uh, and so at the moment, the, this database, the observatoire, is what we use for to, do, uh, to perform all of our project and all our activity. And it currently holds 35 million of messages representing 1.5 million patients. And that's a huge number if you consider the number of patients that usually the pharmaceutical industry uh, is using. I mean, even in clinical studies, you rarely go beyond 50 or 100 patients. When they do focus groups or when they do questionnaires to patients, uh, it's seldom the case when there are more than 20 patients, for instance. So these are massive numbers. And we can, with, in this way, through the observatoire cover more than 150 chronic pathologies with a 10 year back data. That's very important also to understand the evolution of a disease. And through the, the natural language processing, we have extracted from these messages more than 350 million topics of themes. And working on this, then we can perform our analysis. Um, of course, all this happens in a completely uh, regulatory compliant uh, environment, but I don't think I have to, to mention this. This is compulsory, of course. Uh, now, once we have all this data, of course, it's difficult not to be drowned uh, in, in this mass. So we had to uh, elaborate a method, uh, a sequence, a logical sequence, in order to be sure that for a given client, we will get uh, relevant insight related to the pathology that they are taking, in, uh, uh, they, they are supporting for their patients. So we have these five stages. I, I won't spend uh, too much time on this, but we establish what is the level of knowledge of the pathology. Uh, that is, if the patients know their pathology, if they know the risk, the evolution, if they know the symptoms, if they have some, at least some scientific knowledge, we can expect them to take rational decisions. On the, on the other hand, if they don't know much about their pathology, the decisions they will take as patients will be irrational and they will be based on things different than their own interests. So it's very important to, to measure whether we start from a solid foundation or whether it's more irrational. Then we go to the next stage of knowledge of the products. Did the patient understand the characteristics of the product or did they make a mistake? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if you take, in, in France, we have biotherapy uh, and the, the, the root bio is also the, the, the root of the word uh, biologic, which means organic. Biologic is organic, and so patient thinks that biotherapies are organic. That's a mistake. 
And we need to correct that in order to have them understand that they are powerful drugs. Um, we need also to understand who is their trusted professional, uh, healthcare professional in order to establish who will be the best channel to, re to fix the situation if we have a problem and so on. So this is just to explain that we have a method by which at the end we can provide our clients with real key performance indicators that is quantitative information that they can compare and that they can base decision upon uh, where we started from something that was completely unstructured, which is the, the um, messages or uh, the textual messages of the patients. Now, in order to achieve this, that is to turn this unstructured information into those KPIs, KPIs we had to create a, a data model that would be solid enough uh, and sturdy enough to support the queries uh, needed to, to get to, to these indicators. So this is a simplified version of the data model that we use. And you see that the patient is at the center and from the messages, the, the, those blue boxes where we get those themes through natural language processing from their message, we also understand which product they are speaking of, which pathology they suffer from, what is the role of the person who is writing on the form? Is it the patient themselves? Is it their family, a caregiver? Uh, what stage are they with their uh, pathology? Is it mild, moderate, severe? What is the gender? What is the age group of the person who is speaking? All sorts of things. And also, where do they speak? What kind of forum are, are they using? Is it a generalist place? Is it a specialized place? Uh, what is the audience? What is the type of uh, uh, target that uh, this uh, uh, site has? And so all of this information has to be stored in order for us to compute the key performance indicators that you, you have seen. I will get more details in a minute uh, about this. So quite a feat to turn loose information in a way into all this. And this is served by those main processes. First, the collection of the messages from the web. So we use what we call scraping agents, which are little programs uh, that will collect the information from every website that we have on a regular collection. And then we, load, we store the information that we have collected and then this information is in turn, in turn uh, passed through our natural language analysis uh, process uh, so that we can extract from each message all the thematics or all the, uh, the, the keywords in a way that they contain and we can feed our relational database uh, with that. So now that we are our relational database, the observatoire is ready, we can interactively or through processes query it and export the results in form of, of the KPIs. That, these are our main processes. And I will spend a little bit of time on each of them to explain which tool we use and why. In terms of web scra scrapping, you could think that, well, you just have to use one of them uh, of the social media listening platforms that are around and you will get any information that you want. That is not true for us because um, usually the healthcare forms are not accessible through those platforms because there is a variety of topographies of uh, uh, organization of the website and the level of aud audience of this website is not enough to interest those platforms. And also the, the social media platforms return pages as the unit of work. Uh, that is, if you query them to understand what has been said about, uh, I don't know, maybe breast cancer over a certain period in a given country, uh, you will get all the pages uh, around this topic. But we are not interested in pages. We are interested in something more granular, which is a single message from a, sim a single person and all the metadata that is attached to it. So we had to build and maintain scraping agents, one for each place, that these are those little programs that will collect information at individual message level like we want. So, so far we have implemented 
Mozenda as a solution, which is a software as a service uh, solution with the ability to uh, build uh, an, uh, uh, interactively the agent and to host the execution of, of the agent on the Mozenda servers. And so here we are. Uh, here you can see maybe on the left part, this is the interactive usage of Mozenda where you have a website and you have the agent, which is here a series of loops of interest instructions to collect information in the form of tabular data. And once you use it uh, hosted uh, on the, the, the Mozenda servers, what you get is what you see on the right, uh, really tabular data, the extraction of all the information we need from the messages on a given place for a given period. And that's how we be, we collect the raw data that we use uh, for natural language analysis. And when we come to understanding what is what is inside those messages, this is exactly the kind of thing that we don't want to see as a result. Uh, I mean, you see here that those messages could contain many, many, many things, but how can you take any decision based on that. This is completely uh, clumsy and, and unusable. So this is the typical result that you get from a, a social media listing platform. And I still wonder what you can do with that. So we need to rely on natural language processing do, done the right way uh, in order to extract the real value from those messages uh, of patients. But there we had many challenges as well. The, most important point is that we have a double language challenge. If you collect messages between patients around their, their health, first, they are not doctors, they are not physicians, so they will not use the right uh, quotes, of course, the right words uh, about their situation. And on top of that, they are using social media and forums, so it's more relaxed. Uh, way to, to 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 express yourself, and so this is a double barrier in order to do the proper uh, understanding of what they say. So we need to rely on extended Boolean logic, for instance, to understand the the expressions and also to avoid uh, all the traps uh, that you would have if you were only counting words or counting expressions. Uh, for, you have two examples in French. I'm sorry about that here about uh, how you would uh, track, for instance, the emotion of frustration. I mean, even in English, on English forums or on American forums, you would find some people who say, this is frustrating or I am frustrated. But the, the more, more often you will, find, you will find people saying, um, I'm fed up or maybe I'm pissed off, uh, pardon my French uh, here. So, uh, you need to make sure that you have encompassed all, vi all various expressions of a given emotion or a given theme, whatever, in order to uh, understand it right. And the same goes in the other di direction. I mean, if someone says in, in, a, in a message, I'm one foot away from home, this has nothing to do with the foot as the end of the leg, of course. So there are a lot of traps that you, you, you could uh, uh, fell into fall into so counting expressions is not enough you need some form of normalization in order to understand what's important and what's not important and as you will extract from the messages thousands of different teams you need a right organization of those teams into an ontology with the uh, the right level of classification so in order to perform this uh, at the moment we use uh, world stat from uh, Provalis, and this is the reason why I'm, I'm uh, speaking to you today uh, for those reasons, but I will come to them in more details in a second. Uh, we still have, uh, if they did a backup plan uh, using a SAS solution, the like of say, uh, Exalytics of Semantria, for instance, uh, we have developed our own proprietary ontologies and we have developed our own set of rules library of alg algorithms and formulas that are used within WordStat to extract the, the teams from the messages. So what I mean by that 
in terms of, for instance, normalization, is that uh, you see the, uh, on the left side a series of uh, excerpts from messages from patients. One say, I woke up in the middle of the night. Another would say, I can't sleep well. And another would say, I have insomnia. And we have uh, translated, recognized, and translated all this into uh, the topic of sleep trouble. Uh, same thing with weight loss, because there are many ways by which you can express the weight loss. You can say, I have, I, I'm thinner, I have lo lost one stone, uh, I, I lost weight, etc. So all those things are extracted, like you see on the right side, and we identify in the message uh, the, a drug name, a disease name, a sign, a symptom, uh, an element of outcome like stab stabilization, and an emotion, and that's very important to be able to track the emotions. Here, the patient say, I do not believe. So the word believe is a strong verb and it's at the negative form. So here we see that the trust is at stake. So that's how it works. And instead of this cloud of words, we have organized information by which we can say, Hey, look at those two segments. The patient themselves, they consider that the, inf the, the important topics for them are that way, while inside this circle, you can see that the caregivers uh, see it another way and things are not, do not have the same importance for them. So that's the result of uh, doing this kind of analysis. And I mentioned emotions. Uh, as I said before, emotions are the real driver for the behavior. So we have developed uh, a, a complete set of rules to recognize at the moment 59 different emotions. And for instance, uh, frustration has many ways to be expressed, uh, weariness, uh, distrust, etc. And this is very important for us to understand why the patients would go one direction or another direction. So now in the heart, of how we do it. Um, we use WellStat, as I said, first in an interactive uh, model using the, the, the WellStat uh, software. This is very interesting in terms of uh, creating and fine tuning the analysis model. And we appreciate that there are rules that you can define the thematics and various keywords by rules, by words. But using wildcards, using association, and this is very interesting. And so, as you can see, once you have on the left define your model, then the analysis of a, a, a set of documents will provide you with the results in terms of uh, which keywords were found with the proper statistics, and you can extract the, the individual information from this. Now, this is nice, but when you have to process 35 million messages and uh, every month a quarter million more, uh, you, you need to have something more industrial. And so we use also the, the software development kit uh, associated to WordStat so that we can create, as you can see on the left, programs. Here it's Visual Studio or Visual Basic to be uh, completely exact where you use some functions from the software development kit uh, of WordStat, and you can program it and get the results uh, that you want. Here you see a, a, an Excel representation of the results that you, you, you can get. And this is very important for us uh, when you use WordStat as a production tool. As I said in the beginning, we, we don't, pretend to be expert in WordStat or in NLP in general, but we use NLP at the heart of our production. And there are things that we appreciate every day in this tool. As I said, the articulation between interactive views with the WordStat program and the software development kit is really a lifesaver. You can, in the interactive uh, version, create, import, and edit your dictionaries to use the, the WordStat terminology. You can use the right combination in terms of categories, words, rules, various operators like uh, and, or, not, uh, near, not near, 
with the notion of distance, the scope within the same sentence, the same paragraph, the same document. And so the algorithmic uh, natural language processing is completely served by this. And on top of this, you, there is a very useful function, which is called quick word in context or quick, and by which you can interactively verify uh, how the software identified any keyword within the, your documents. And so you can really fine tune it and avoid to be too loose or too strict into the assignation of a, uh, a, a keyword. And then you freeze uh, the model once it is fine tuned and you export it so it can be used massively and in an as unattended way with the software development kit. And then uh, it, within that, uh, you will find that uh, uh, using only three function of the software development kits, you can really automate your, your production. And that's what we did. I mean, there is one function in your program to choose and load a dictionary or a model file. That's function number one. Then with your program, you can get the next document to be analyzed, for instance, from a database using a select order. You can, that's function number two, perform the, the analysis on the document according to the model that you have loaded. And then that function number three, you would read and loop on the, on the results and store them in your database, like, likewise using, for instance, the insert order in, C, in SQL. And while you are it, uh, you can also store the model file name in order to make sure that you have some traceability. And that's it. And in terms of performance, this is absolutely perfect. We use a standard uh, core i7 PC with 16 gigabytes. So it's not uh, a rocket. It, it's a standard PC. And we can achieve loops of uh, half a million documents in less than an hour with a given dictionary. So this is exactly what we needed. And we are, from that point of view, very happy uh, uh, with WordStat. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't think some, some of those things could be improved. Uh, I, I wanted to share that as well. Um, for my usage, I would like that the usage would be, especially with the SDK, um, more integrated into the database. I would like to be able to generate automatically the dictionaries, both for an interactive or for a software development kit usage. Uh, let me give you an example. There are new drugs on the market every month and we track them and we store the name of the drugs and the name of the molecule into one table in the database. But I also have on top of this to make sure that our model are also updated every month with the new drugs, the analysis models. If I could uh, create dynamically the models by reading the records in the database, that would save me a lot of time. I have tried to do that interactively with Excel. And uh, I stumbled into something that at first I could not understand. And um, in the formula uh, for the rules, there are characters that looks like they are that look like they are spaces, but actually they are not spaces. They have a special meaning. So it's very difficult to create from scratch uh, a model. And I would like this to be completely integrated and to store the rules, whether it would be categories, words, rules, uh, etc., in tables, and to build up dynamically the analysis model when I whenever I want them. One, one or two topics that I'm not clear about, and this is probably my fault, but I'm not completely comfortable with rules within rules. Sometimes I would like to use them, but I don't know to which level I can indent them uh, and what is the recursive uh, power of uh, WordStat. I'm also not that comfortable with, when it comes to accent, apostrophe, and uh, special characters or non-Latin alphabets. And probably this is my fault as well. Uh, but I don't. sometimes I need the accents to be analyzed. Sometimes I don't need them. And I have not found a, a single way to, uh, to treat this. And also, I would like to have an, an interactive export format. As I said, that is not full of empty. I mean, if you have tried to export in an Excel file, the result uh, by case, 
you will see that the result you get is, is full of empty cells when the, you have then to process it afterwards again in order to get only the real results. But that is not so important. It can be overcome. But th this is uh, uh, certainly a, a problem in that uh, the, the production process is not completely streamlined. What are our next stages? Because we won't stop them. Uh, we, we would like to be able to split those messages for the analysis into logical segments versus uh, the current situation where we split in formal, se in formal segments using uh, periods or end of paragraphs or end of lines. Uh, we would like to improve some recognitions where the, um, the, 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 log the algorithmic uh, approach is not at the moment satisfactory, like recognizing, di differentiating between a co-occurrence of two keywords, or maybe a relation of causality or a relation of anteriority, such things that are not mandatory, but that could improve our solutions. And so we think that we should uh, complete our uh, view as uh, not only algorithmic logic, but on top, some sort of machine learning. This is for the, the years to come, uh, to, to be honest. Uh, we don't have that much time at the moment. Then I wanted to speak about data storage, but as you can see, we have simply a MySQL database where the information is uh, uh, stored according to the data model. And we are able to perform things like this analysis. So we'll take a moment to, to look at it. What we have here is what we call the predictive dropout index for a given drug. So those blue bars all represent various drugs in the same market, that is the treatment of uh, polyarthritis. And what we have measured is the percentage of messages about each of those drugs that would contain any topic like disappointment, discouragement, doubt, frustration, weariness, all those emotions that are forerunners of a, drop, of a dropout. And as you can see, the average, the, the orange box, is around 50%, meaning that 15% of those messages in, of, uh, about product in this market show signs of possible dropout. And most of the products are within the range of 13 to 15. And so there's not much thing to say about it. But there are two, one at 44 and one other at 50, meaning that one message over two, every other message contains signs of dropout. And if I was the product manager for this drug, I would like to know it first. And also I would be interested in understanding why we have this situation. So this is to exemplify how we turn the uh, analysis of thousands or millions uh, of messages unstructured into a very powerful performance indicators about patients that product managers in the pharmaceutical industry can use. Uh, and that illustrates how we, uh, what we bring to the market. So to summarize, and I'm, I'm, close to the, the end of this presentation. You see, we use various tools on the market because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel and we have no pretension to reinvent better tools than those that exist. But we have our own intellectual property in the form of the scraping agents, in the form of the NLP rules and the ontology that is used with Warstat and in the form of our uh, programs. Uh, and so far, this approach is highly appreciated by the pharmaceutical market in France, where we operate. Uh, you see all those are our clients so far. We were also recognized and we won the first uh, startup context, contest about uh, new data in healthcare organized by the Johnson & Johnson Lab, uh, Pharmaco. And we also had several publication that is very important for us. That is an exposition, an exposure towards uh, the scientific community, uh, whether it was publication or posters in congresses. Uh, and this means that our methodology, the way we process the data and the origin of the data uh, are now being to be, uh, started to be accepted by a scientific community, which was not the case before focus patient existed. 
And with that, I'm ready to accept your questions uh, and to give you any additional explanation that you would uh, require. And it was 35 minutes, so not so bad. No, it was very interesting. Thank you, Thierry. Um, so if you would like to um, ask, a, uh, ask a question, please go to the chat feature and ask a question. A couple of comments just coming out of that. Um, we expect to be releasing WordStat 9 um, later this spring, probably in a month or two. We're doing beta testing now. If anybody's on this call is interested, or we will be doing beta testing very shortly within the next few days. And if uh, anybody on this call is interested in doing beta testing, please get in contact with us through either support at provalisresearch.com or uh, through contact us. And uh, we will put you in the list for beta testers. Uh, you need to have the time and, and uh, available because we're trying to do this in the next few weeks to be able to release it. One of the things that WordStat 9 will address is it'll be fully Unicode and will support the inclusion of any language. So that should be helpful. And uh, you'll be able to do both po post pro pro pre processing and po post processing, excuse, excuse me, with Python or R. So you'll be able to do things like removing an accent. Um, some of your other issues there that you raised, Thierry, uh, if uh, we'll, we'll, be following, we're, we'll be following up with you or looking at how uh, we can maybe implement some of them or make it better for you and uh, you know, following up with you on your specific issues of things you don't want to do. I also know that, I'm sorry, I'll get to questions in one second. I also know that you expressed to me before this uh, uh, lunch and learn that if there are people out there who uh, have suggestions for you about how to do things that you're very much want them to contact you to give you suggestions about, you know, how to do what you're doing better um, or to give you some ideas and your contact information is there on the slide. Your, uh, your, um, Yes, by all means, if anyone has uh, suggestions or questions about why I didn't use this method or that way to, to perform this or that, uh, uh, of course, I'm completely open to discuss that and to change my mind, uh, obviously, uh, if there is a better way to, to, to do things. Okay, For, uh, one question is, um, how, how about misspellings? How do you deal with misspellings? Yeah, uh, we... It depends on the type of keyword that we want to recognize. Uh, I mean, we would be very uh, uh, interested in, in recognizing as many times as possible the name of a drug, for instance. So in this instance, any new drug is inserted into the dictionary with potential misspells. Uh, now, when it comes to other type of teams, it's not necessarily the, the case. I mean, any elements of the anatomy, like the foot, the hand, the nose, or, or the liver, or, 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 or the lungs, uh, we can live without taking care of, of, of this because the number will be such that it's not important to, to use the misspells. Now, having said that, uh, Beyond the misspells, we found out that some people would speak about their healthcare professional with nicknames or short names that we did not imagine. And so we have implemented those variations uh, in our dictionary. For instance, uh, the gynecologist in French, it's gynecologue. Uh, and women always short shorten it by speaking about their gynecol, which is okay but they also say Gigi. And this we didn't know before. Uh, and so once we uh, analyze what was the level of recognition in a, a, in a sample of text, we noticed that this word was coming uh, often enough for us to be interested in understanding it. And then we add this version to the recognition of gynecologists. So that's how it works. So we distinguish between what we need to, at all costs, recognize, what we need to recognize when it is correctly spelled, and how we need to extend beyond spelling uh, to, to be in line with the usage. 
Okay, uh, again, just to remind you, um, if you do want to ask questions, please use the chat feature, uh, which is on the right, right of your screen uh, to ask your questions. Um, another question is, uh, somebody says, I'm just curious, but why do you want to remove accents? Oh, it, it's not that I want to remove accents. Uh, in, in some cases, removing accents and considering that the letter is not accentuated, would be a shortcut in recognition of a keyword. And in other instances, it would be very important to keep it. For instance, it, one type of analysis is trying to determine whether the person who is speaking is a man or a woman. Uh, you don't always have this information in clear uh, and you have to guesstimate based on the, the way they write. And uh, in this instance, in French, Understanding the accent and the not, not accent uh, letters is very important. So most of the times I need to keep them. And on other occasions, I would like to get rid of them in, in order to shorten the, the dictionary and to, to get to quicker results. So it, it, it's not a unique situation. It, it's mixed. OK, great. Good. How long did it take you to build your model? Uh, we before creating focus focus patient we, we we spent some time exploring various ways to serve the pharma industry uh, in our previous company that was called alternative pharma and uh, that mean doing things that did not exist alternative way of serving them and we in that time we did several ad hoc projects uh, collecting uh, on a as needed basis um, messages from the web and doing an ad hoc analysis. That's when we started to think that there should be a collection of those themes of those keywords and that they should be organized. Uh, so we had some sort of skeleton of that when we started Focus Patient. And when we started, actually we sort of shut down the commercial activity for six months in order to make sure that we would build the, the observatoire uh, as a solid database. So uh, at the moment, as I said, Focus Passion is a startup. The, 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 the headcount is, is only four. We had the help of uh, uh, people, three or four more people in order to build up the, uh, the, 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 the observatoire. And within six months, it was completely operational. That doesn't mean that it is, uh, uh, frozen now, it, it's always improving, but we were able to serve uh, our clients with the first project within six months. Okay, how, how accurate is your model and, and how do you go about improving accuracy? Oh, that's a very, very good question. And uh, I don't think there is an absolute answer to that. Um, what, what, uh, let me, one other question that was, uh, often asked at the beginning was, how representative are you? And how can we trust your figures? And uh, having been before, uh, before creating Focus Patient, Focus Patient, the head of statistics and uh, uh, production department at IQVIA, which is the worldwide leader in information services for pharmaceutical industry, and the, uh, one of the actual schools about panels, sampling, and projections. Uh, I knew that I could not tell that we were completely representative because there is no uh, sampling uh, strategy. I cannot say I want a hundred men, hundred women, 50% uh, of them um, uh, age more than 50 and the rest under 50, etc. I take whatever I can. And I think the, the, the large numbers uh, is very important. And we also, take very good care into collecting information from a, a, a wide variety of forums that is specialized forum where people are very educated, but also, you know, there is a forum, I don't know if you have this in, in the US, which is called Vinted, where people sell their secondhand clothes. And within this forum, there is a section about health where people would discuss about their health. You don't understand why, but that's where it happens. Of course, this is not the same level of education about their pathology. So we collect all that and we are uh, at least touching a variety of population. Now, when it comes to uh, 
how does it work with the level of recognition? We have to compare this to first, the prior situation where nothing existed. So this is much better than nothing. <laughs> Uh, not, not much uh, as, as a consolation, of course. And second point is that more seriously, what we do, and we do this on a regular basis, we take, for instance, a uh, thousand messages and uh, we do a, a complete human-based analysis of them. And then we compare to what the, the processes have identified in terms of keywords. And we track the differences to either say, uh, well, as I, as a human, was wrong, or the machine was wrong, and we need to correct uh, the, the the dictionary, or this is okay, and we can uh, go on like this. We are not looking for 100% accuracy, uh, because even with experts, it doesn't exist. I mean, if you take three experts to analyze the contents of a, a message, you will have three different answers. And it will be depending if it's Friday afternoon and, it, and it's good weather, they will be all optimistic and we, they will recognize some teams. If, you, if it's Monday morning and it's raining, it will be different. So we rely on machines because they will be constant, they will be consistent. And whether it's the product of our client or the product of the competitor, the rules will be the same. So the result will be comparable. And this is more what we are aiming at. Uh, I mean, qual uh, quality and comparable objective results that uh, some sort of non-existent 100% accuracy. Okay, um, thank you very much. And uh, just to- No, please go ahead. Uh, as you have seen in the example of the, the predictive dropout index, I mean, if a product has a 13% index and another has a 15% index, to me, this is no difference. And I, I, I want to argue about that, about that. And what I'm more interested in is those products who had 44 or 50% index. And in that case, I know for sure that there is a problem. And this is the level of uh, attention I want to get from my clients. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, it doesn't look like we have any more questions, but it's kind of, this is a very complete presentation. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else to add, Siri? No, no, I, I was very happy to be uh, able to, to explain and also to make it hold within the, uh, the, the time frame that we, we, we had decided. And I'm looking forward anyway to information coming from you, I mean, probably about those things I, I mentioned, but also anyone, again, uh, that who would have a, a question or suggestion about uh, the usage we make of, of our stat. Uh, and uh, I think this format uh, of the lunch and, lunch and Learn is very interesting. Okay, well, thank you very, very much. Um, just to remind everybody that our next Lunch and Learn is on April 14th at 11 o'clock Eastern. We'll have a presentation from the international telephony company Telenor um, on how it uses word stats, automated content analysis to save time, money, gain valuable insight into customer comments, and actually make life better for employees. And Yar Hildrum, the research fellow for Telenor, will be the presenter. You can go to and register for this uh, next Lunch and Learn on our website. And then further, as you can see on the screen, on Tuesday, June 15th, uh, at noon, we'll have a, a presentation on how to reveal the underlying intellectual structure of the domain with, word, uh, with WordStat. If you can also follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn to see um, our next Lunch and Learns. We have spaces. If anybody on this call um, would like to join, please get in contact with us. And if you enjoyed this, this series, you like what's happening here, uh, shout it out on, uh, on social media, on your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, whatever social media you use, and uh, let people know that you're learning something and it's an interesting process. So again, thank you, Thierry. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks. And happy Easter.